Hi, in this paper we present, we are creating a new enabling UI technology to advance FNIRS BCI for future researchers. And that we see FNIRS BCI as a promising form of future human computer interaction. A brain computer interface is a communication system that allows real-time interaction between the human brain and external devices. Traditionally, human computer interaction relies on keyboard, mouse, and a touchpad. In contrast, a BCI system aims to achieve the interaction implicitly via the user's brain activity. Functional near-infrared spectroscopy measures the changes in oxy and deoxyhemoglobin in the brain. It provides a convenient real-time input for BCI applications. FNIRS shows increasing promise to enable effective brain-computer interfaces for a wide range of users. In this paper, our goal is to classify the subject's mental workload using FNIRS data. Image on the left is our FNIRS machine, and on the right is the headband currently we are using. It is quick, easy to put on, and no EEG grease. Compared with EEG, FNIRS has a higher spatial resolution. In this paper, we release a new multi-subject FNIRS dataset along with other information, like demographic and contextual information cognitive task performance records, and post-experiment interviews. We propose a three-phase machine learning-based pipeline to improve classification of cognitive workload. We open source our software to provide an easily accessible system for other researchers. Ultimately, our data set, code, and methodology can allow future researchers to explore new methods and use cases for BCI workload classification and improve generalization to new subjects. We use the MBAC task to trigger a different level of short-term memory mental workload from the subject. MBAC is a well-established task in experimental psychology and which we believe closely correlative with many UI tasks. In the MBAC task, we present the subject with a series of stimuli and ask the subject to compare the current stimulus to the stimulus shown n steps previously. An example of the data is showing on the right top. We further processed the subject's data into multi-windows of two seconds each, and our model needs to classify which MBAC task the subject is currently performing, giving the Windows data. In terms of modeling, the problem is challenging from several aspects. First, we have only a small amount of participants. Secondly, for each subject, we have limited data. Furthermore, there's a substantial cross-subject variation, which is reported in past literatures and also observed from our past experiments. To build a better personalized model for each subject, we propose a data augmentation plus domain adaptation pipeline. Our pipeline includes three phases. Say we want to build a model for subject I, then in phase one, we will use all other subjects' trained data to create synthetic data by itself. We train a model on this synthetic data. Phase one is motivated by the need of data augmentation. We will then use the learned weight to initialize the phase two model. In phase two, we train a model with the real observed data from all other subjects. Phase two is inspired by the fact that human brain share some similarity. We then use the learned weights for phase two to initialize the weights for phase three. In phase three, we fine tune on subject I's trained data and evaluate 
the performance of subject eyes test data. Phase three is inspired by the fact that despite sharing some similarities, the human brain also has considerable differences. Over three months in early 2021, 27 healthy individuals have participated in the study. We deemed 15 of these studies eligible for this work based on their behavior during the experiment session. Here are the results for binary classification of the embed task given two, sec two second segment of ethnic measurements. We report the average accuracy across 15 subjects. A system that guesses at random will have a 50% accuracy. Our three-phase approach has an average accuracy of 71%, outperforming the compared baseline. We further found that each of the phases contribute to the model performance. Reducing individual calibration efforts has practical implication for real-time BCI systems. Therefore, we further investigate how well is our approach at reducing individual calibration efforts. This figure shows the performance versus the percentage of data used for the target subjects for binary classification. We found that our approach using only 50% of the subject's trained data consistently outperformed traditional approach like logistic regression and random forest trained with full size of the subject's trained data. To conclude, we provide a new FNUS dataset collected using rigorous procedure from subjects performing a standard MBAC task and show how it can be used to improve performance for future systems. We develop a new machine learning approach to process and utilize the FNUS data. We show from our experiment that our proposed three-phase machine learning pipeline significantly improved MBAC classification performance over several established baselines. Moreover, even with a reduced amount of per-user training data, our approach still outperforms baseline models trained with all available target subjects trained data. This shows the potential of reducing individual calibration efforts when deploying BCI application in the future. We hope that our new dataset, machine learning methods, and tool will remove barriers that have prevented a wider range of researchers from using FNUS-based BCI and facilitate the development of a new generation of powerful and easy to use brain computer interfaces. Currently, there is no large benchmark FNUS dataset. As an ongoing effort, we are creating a large scale FNUS dataset with recommended protocols on how to use the dataset for future researchers who work in the intersection of machine learning and BCI. We thank all our friends and colleagues for their help and collaboration.